starting with the design and templates, then shaping raw lumber into an instrument, and finally finish and assembly, you're about to see my entire process of building this guitar. In order to create the templates needed for the build, all the elements are precisely marked. Now, the body and headstock shapes can be drawn. All of the components must be taken into consideration when doing the design. Wood for the neck is selected and processed. Strips are cut, sanded and planed in preparation for gluing into a multi-laminate neck plank. Laminates are glued together, and the next day the neck blank is cleaned up and prepared for further work. Next, the center line and outline of the guitar are marked, and the neck and body sections are cut and milled to the correct thickness for this stage of the build. The headstock needs to be angled back to create downward string pressure over the nut. In order to accomplish this, a scarf joint is marked, cut and glued. There are four holes drilled in the template, which now get drilled into the through neck. These are used to help line things up during various phases of the build. The outline of the guitar is marked and then cut out. Neck edges are routed to shape. Holes for the tuners are drilled and the volute is shaped. The front of the headstock will have a maple veneer matching the wood from the top. This is cut out and then glued on in a vacuum bag. After trimming the veneer flush, a stepped hole to fit the tuner is drilled from the back of the headstock. A step down is cut around where the end of the fretboard will go. Next, the edges of the through neck are brought to the correct width. Holes are drilled for the tuner screws. The end of the headstock veneer is trimmed to fit against the end of the fretboard.
the logo is then branded on the front of the headstock. Slots for the truss rod and titanium reinforcement are cut. The titanium is epoxied in place with a maple cap over the top. After trimming the cap flush, the truss rod is installed. The truss rod has a maple sleeve which gets glued to the bottom of the slot. Then a maple cap is glued on top. This protects from glue squeezing into the truss rod. It also improves the gluing surface for the fretboard and ensures there is no empty space for the truss rod to rattle in. Now, the neck is ready for the fretboard to be glued on. This piece of West African ebony will become the fretboard. It's trimmed down, leaving a piece from the end big enough to make the truss rod cover later. After sanding it to thickness, the fretboard is mounted on a fret slotting template and the slots are cut. The first cut is continued all the way through by hand. This is where the nut will go. The fretboard can now be cut and routed to its final shape. This fretboard will have a custom design inlaid into the 12th fret area. The design is traced and then adapted to be inlayable. A circle of ebony is cut out. This will be the background for the inlay. Each section of the design is traced, cut out, refined with a file, then inlaid into the ebony. The eye is made from 4,500 year old Swamp Cody. A piece of maple is bent and glued around the edge. Then, the circle is inlaid into the fretboard and slots are cut back through the inlay. The 12th fret side marker is milled into the back edge of the fretboard. Lumen light glow in the dark material is inlaid.
the fretboard is taped in place on the neck. In three frets across the length of the neck, holes are drilled through fret slots into the neck wood. Small nails are tapped in and cut off, leaving enough to keep the fretboard in place when gluing. Hide glue is used to attach the fretboard. The glue needs to be heated to become liquid and gels as it cools. In order to have enough open time to get the clamps on, the parts are preheated. After the glue dries, access to the truss rod and a pocket for the truss rod cover are cut on the mill. The cover is made of an offcut from past the end of the fretboard, as shown earlier in the video. Wood is removed for the nut slot. Next, slots are cut for the lumen lay fret markers. The lumen lay is cut and shaped to fit in the slots. The neck taper is cut on the mill. Then the fretboard radius can be roughed in with 80 grit. The desired neck shape is achieved by cutting facets into the rectangular neck. These are marked carefully and the wood in between the lines is removed. I just need to round over the peaks and the neck is shaped. Rasps are used to carve the volute. Next thing to do is prepare the stainless steel frets. They are cut from a roll and the tangs are nipped and filed. The fretboard radius is final sanded and then the frets are pressed in. Fret ends are cut and filed to a bevel. Mahogany will be used for the wings of the body. Pieces are cut and glued to the through neck. After the glue dries, the wings can be made flush with the through neck. The body template is pinned in place. The outline of the body is marked, bandsawed and routed.
channels are cut to connect wires from the pickups and bridge ground to the controls. Maple for the top is resawn and book matched. A layer of wangi will go underneath the maple. The maple and wangi are glued together with epoxy. Once the glue dries, the outline of the top is bandsawed and the area around the end of the fretboard is routed and chiseled to fit perfectly around it. Holes are drilled to help align things. The edge of the top is routed to shape and then rounded over, creating a step down. This ledge will help guide the depth of the top carve. The shape of the carve is drawn and wood is removed next to the fretboard. This area is difficult to carve after the top is glued on. A vacuum bag can then be used to glue on the top. A roundover is routed around the back edge, then holes for the controls can be made. The guitar is clamped at the correct angle on the drill press, and the jack is drilled. Holes for the bridge and bridge ground go in next. A stepped recess is made for the ferrule block. Guide holes for the controls are drilled. Pickups are routed and threaded inserts for mounting them are installed. Strap button holes are drilled. The top is carved using a mix of power and hand tools. Controls are recessed and drilled all the way through to the back. The control cavity and cover can now be made. I try to match the grain of the cover as well as possible to the grain of the back. Magnets are installed and the cover is done.
Now the serial number can be stamped. This guitar will have custom knobs made from the wood of the back, top, and fretboard. Lines are drawn and the carving begins. After the carving is done, the instrument is final sanded. Color is wiped onto the top. Then some clear, and the burst is sprayed. After spraying the rest of the clear coats, the frets are leveled, crowned, and the ends are softened. The top and the headstock will have a gloss finish. These are sanded to 8000 grit and buffed to a high polish. Oil is applied to the fretboard. Copper shielding is applied to the control cavity. The hardware is installed and the guitar is wired up. The nut is fitted to the nut slot and slots for the strings are cut. Strings go on, the nut slots are fine tuned, and the nut gets glued in. That is the last piece to be added to the guitar, so at this point it is made. Just some setup and cleanup work to do and an instrument is born. <laughs>